I've been studying the chemistry part for the MCAT and there's so much information to cover in that section. It's just absolutely overwhelming. And so I want to give you some tips right now that's going to help you learn the material a lot better, but also help you understand it in a more effective and efficient manner. So the first tip I have for you is know the terminology that comes with chemistry. That's probably going to be the most important part when it comes to chemistry because you have to learn so many new terms and some of these terms are really closely related. So if you don't know exactly what this term means, if you, if you assign the wrong meaning to it, you're going to get the wrong idea and completely mess up a lot of questions if you keep mixing up terms. So for example, let's take electron affinity and electronegativity. Now electron affinity is, uh, is the, the energy change an atom experiences when it accepts an electron. Electronegativity is the willingness of an atom to accept an electron. So you know, they both have to deal with electron, but the idea is completely different, right? right? One deals with energy and one is actually taking the electron. And the other one is how bad it wants a new electron, right? Wants another electron. And so if you mix those two things up, you're totally going to get the wrong idea when you're actually trying to answer a question. And that happens a lot when you're learning a specific section, you know, especially um, dealing with valence electrons. You have all these different terms dealing with you no know, electrons and what happens with them. And if you mix them up, you're totally going to get you know, the wrong idea when you're answering all these different questions. You're just going to be really confused. And it's going to be a real struggle when you try to go through. You're like, wait, what does this mean again? Because it keeps using the same word over and over and over. You know, so you have to keep going back and looking up what the word means. So if you know the terminology, that's a really good starting point. That's going to help you out a lot. Okay. So pretty much it's memorizing vocabulary. And I made videos on that, you know, how to memorize vocabulary and things like that. So go check them out. Now, the second tip I have for you and the last tip for this video is that you really need to comprehend what you're understanding when it comes to chemistry. Really take time to think about it. Like, okay, wait, does this make sense? Okay. If it doesn't, go back. If it does, move on. Because a lot of things are related together. And if you don't make the connection between these different ideas, you're going to have a hard time. So for example, there's something called first ion ionization energy. And what that is, is the amount of energy it takes to, to remove the outermost valence electron. Okay. So that's what it is. So you're like, okay, that makes sense. But here's the thing that might show if you know it or not, if you really understand the concept. So the book was talking about, you can actually do more ionization energies. What's going to happen when you do more ionization energies? Now, right now, if you think, okay, wait, what does happen? I'm not sure. That instantly shows you don't understand the topic and that you're not thinking about all the other ideas you learned so far. Because if you did, you would know instantly what happens when you take more electrons away from an atom. So let me show you with the whiteboard. Now I'm going to try to avoid, avoid these different glares I see. So here, let's say you have uh, the nucleus. Then you have the different orbitals and things like that. So you have these electrons right here. Okay. So ionization energy is the amount of energy to take this electron away. Okay. So this is the first, let's say IE, ionization energy. And so here, here, um, here's all the parts. So we're talking about what happens when you do another ionization energy what happens at the second ionization energy what's the difference if you don't know you don't understand the idea and that's because you don't understand how this concept ionization energies work with the other ideas you learned for the relationship between them both and it's not even a complicated idea it's a very simple idea that i'm going to show you right now that um, if you actually knew it you made the connections you would know instantly what happens when you take this electron away so as you know or as you should know, the center is positive. The nucleus is positive. And the outer, right, all this stuff is negative. Okay? So that's what happens. So it's negative over here. This whole outside is negative because that's where the electrons are. They're negative. Okay? So you're taking away more electrons. So if you're going to take this electron away for the second um, ionization energy, you know instantly that, hey, the nucleus is positive and now you're taking more negative things away. So that means this positive nucleus really wants to keep these other electrons to the center. It's really going to attract them. Now there's less negativity here. And so right away, you should know, wait, if I do more ionization energies, I know as I do more, 
the energy is going to keep increasing and increasing and increasing because the nucleus is going to keep attracting more and more and more the less electrons there are. Now right here, this is a very simple idea. It's probably one of the most basic ideas that the nucleus is positive because of the protons and the outside is negative because of the electrons. But because you know the idea, you should instantly understand how ionization energies work and what's going to happen when you take more electrons away. So that's why I'm saying that it's super important that you actually comprehend, take time, pause when you learn a new idea and see why it makes sense. If there's anything that's confusing, go back and reread it because you really do need to understand these ideas because these simple ideas really make it a lot easier for you to understand these more complex ideas like ionization energy that's a little bit you no know, above just you no know, protons are positive nucleus positive and electrons are negative so it goes beyond that so those are the tips i have for you today hopefully you found this video useful and you look forward to the more videos i'm going to be making about the mcat and the different sections i'm studying because i'm trying to go through and find out okay what's useful what's going to be you know the best thing because right now you know memorization um i, I saw was knowing all these terminologies. I was like, man, this is something you need to know right away. This is something you need to be doing, learning all these terms, knowing the difference between them. So look forward to the next videos. I'll probably make, probably make more um, videos about chemistry because I'm not through the whole section yet. And so look forward to that. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Subscribe to my channel for more videos on memory techniques, how to do better in school, memory challenges, updates, and much more. Also remember to click the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are down below in the description. You also can check out these videos. If you want to learn all the memory techniques and learn how to apply them to all sorts of information, or if you want to start competing in memory competitions, you can check out my programs down below in the description. Look forward to my next video and get ready to get the best memory of your life.